Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudois, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Director of Marketing. Our goal here is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. Andrew, you know what we haven't done in a while? We haven't gone to the Bahamas. (laughs) Uh, We haven't... I've never been to the Bahamas. Don't plan to go to the Bahamas. We haven't played Frisbee in a while. Uh, What are you fishing for? (laughs) We haven't done an Ask Andrew Anything podcast for a while. Is that what you have planned for me? I do. I do. And I have a few questions that may be stumpers. So we do an Ask Andrew Anything episode about every 10, well, exactly every 10 podcasts. But the 100th episode, we did a little radio drama. That's right. I remember that. It was kind of fun. Yeah, so that actually means we haven't done an Ask Andrew Anything episode for 20 episodes. Good heavens. Well, we're behind schedule. Yes, we are. (laughs) We better remedy that. So ask me something. Okay. So some of these are kind of technical related to our product. Some are conversations that we can have where you can wax philosophical. Okay. Well, if I don't know the answer, can I call our customer service department? Yeah, well, (laughs) and some of these were actually addressed directly to our customer service department. So I just scoured the emails and said, oh, that would be an interesting one. I wonder what, how Andrew would ask that. All right. And then we could test to see if your answer actually matched how they answered the <laughs> question. <laughs> no pressure to our customer service team. Nicole asked a question. I have a question regarding my eight-year-old son who really hates to do the physical part of writing. Your course says that we can scribe for them. Does that mean scribe everything from the outline to the rough draft to the final draft, or should they be doing some of the writing themselves? Well, it's a reasonable question, and it's not an uncommon thing to find an eight-year-old boy who dislikes the physical writing part. So she shouldn't feel frustrated or alone. For every question like that, there's a thousand people who have the same challenges. Yes, in the beginning, you would do everything needed to go through the process with the student and help them be successful. And then you would look at how can we move in a weaning process direction toward a little less of doing everything for him and a little more of him doing it. A few thoughts. One is that uh, sometimes boys like that writing on paper is rather tiresome. Mm -hmm. It's small, it requires focus, it's fine motor writing on a whiteboard might actually be easier. Not always, but maybe. So if you had the ability for the child try to write the keyword outline on a whiteboard as you do it together with him, that would perhaps be less painful and he could see it more easily and you could, you know, move from there. So a thought would be, you know, go to a whiteboard and make it visually and uh, from a a fine motor point of view less tiring. On the paper, you want to be sure of a few things. One is that you can write down what he says, but you want to write it down and be sure it's legible. I've watched some moms write what the student said, but there's no way the student could read mom's handwriting. So take the time and, you know, write it neatly so that he can actually read what he told you to write. And there's more of a sense of ownership than if it's just, okay, I dictate to mom, now I could go play. And then maybe try to have him read it back out loud from what he dictated. And uh, maybe he wants to change something. Maybe he wants to add something in. That can happen in that process of reading what he or she wrote they may get an idea for changing or improving it. A further step would be to take turns. And Mm -hmm. this is what I think is the, this would be the intermediate goal, is for uh, you to say, make the outline together, that's fine, on a board, on a piece of paper, whatever. Then the student could dictate the first sentence from the keyword outline, and the scribe would write 
what the student dictated exactly legibly. Then you would trade roles. So now the, the mom or the facilitator would dictate the next sentence to the child from the keyword outline, and the child would attempt to then write down the sentence that he heard. So he's involved in both activities, the thinking of something and saying it, and then the hearing of what he's thinking and writing it, only he's hearing what you're dictating, so it simplifies the process. And then you can pull the trick. Let him dictate long sentences, <laughs> and you dictate short ones. Uh, but he gets a sense of going back and forth then, trade the pen, go back and forth. You're equally as involved and equally participating. And at some point, and I don't know, you know, are we talking weeks, months, or years? There's no way to predict that. But at some point, he will say, okay, mom, I got it. Okay, I don't need help now. I can do this. Right. Because that's what, you know, kids are wired for. It's just that it takes a different amount of time until they want to do that process. At the same time, I would recommend that this child do a certain amount of just straight copying, mm -hmm. just copy work. And, of course, we've talked about this in, in many different talks and podcasts, the value of just copying f poem, scripture, a story, something that's large enough print that it's easy to read, and then he just copies. And I would say set a certain number of words as the daily goal. Mm -hmm. I would suggest no more than what the child could reasonably do without too much fooling around in, say, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if that's 50 words, set the goal at 50 words. If it's 30 words, set it lower. If it's higher, set it a little higher. And then create an economic system that motivates the child and changes it from a, a chore mm -hmm. to be argued about and procrastinated and avoided into a challenge. Uh, that's the trick, is change it from a chore to a challenge. And so you set up a point system or economic system for every word that you copy correctly up to the limit of the day. You get a point or a penny or whatever you want. And then those points go toward some larger long-term privilege. Uh, so you plan it out that you've got maybe probably a month, perhaps. I know, eight-year-old, maybe two weeks. But if you're shooting for 50 words a day and you think you could do that for two weeks, that would be 10 days, so that would be um, 500 points, mm -hmm. right? My math is right. <laughs> uh, so then when the child earns the 500 points, then he can do some special activity, something you'd probably like to do anyway, but it's just special. You know, go to the Air and Space Museum or... Uh, have Friday afternoon off from school or, you know, whatever would appeal to a child, go to the ball game with dad. And so he's then willing to do the hard, hard activity of disciplining his eyes and his brain and his hand and his body and his breathing and his balance and the paper and the pen. He's willing to do the hard work of doing that for a short time each day because there's a long-term goal associated. And then that, of course, will build up the stamina for him to be putting words on paper, you know, each week that goes by more easily, more fluently, without the same kind of, you know, intense dislike of the process. And is, I think if you do the copy work and the weaning process of completely scribing for him to trading the pen back and forth, those will help each other a lot. And probably within a year, your problem won't exist anymore because he will have done those things that would build the independence that would give him a greater satisfaction. Great. I know that will be helpful for a lot of our listeners. So as you were giving your answer, I thought of three different talks that we can refer our listeners to. One is the four language arts, where you spend some time talking about the system that you set up for your own son as he was doing copy work and the end result, the surprising result of that. And then also your talk, pen and paper, what the research says. And then finally, the teaching boys talk, where you talk about motivation and the value of motivating yeah. students. Here is a technical question about a 
an advanced dress up. Okay. Okay, ready? My darling daughter wrote the following sentence in her composition and marked it as including a dual L-Y dress up. Unlike her sisters, the little mermaid is quietly thoughtful and curiously imaginative. Is she right? Can the L-Y adverbs modify separate adjectives and still count as duals? What's tough about that is the sentence is so good, you don't want to mess with it. Yes. <laughs> it, it's almost as you hear that, you see the child use the idea, wrote a very well-balanced sentence. If you were to say, no, that doesn't count, you have to do it differently, it would be kind of unmake the sentence to a certain degree and so I would be hesitant to do that. Mm -hmm. In the strictest technical sense the duals they should be modifying one thing so two adverbs on one verb or adjective, two adjectives on one noun, two verbs on one subject or, or one subject of a clause. However I think there's room for a little leeway here in that and I'd, I'd have to go argue this with Webster in Vancouver to, to you know, get the final Supreme Court dictator decision. <laughs> in the triples, we would allow the triples to be together or spaced, right? So you could have three L-Y adverbs all on one verb, or you could have three L-Y adverbs anywhere in the sentence. So my logic would be, if the triples can be spaced and be triples, couldn't the duals also be spaced and be duals, especially in this case where it's a nice parallel construction? Read the sentence again. Unlike her sisters, the Little Mermaid is quietly thoughtful and curiously imaginative. To undo it, you'd have to say is, you know, quietly but curiously thoughtful and imaginative. It, it wouldn't work as well. So I'd let it go and remind myself, if I was the teacher or the parent, uh, the goal of the checklist is not to be legalistic, to do, you know, doing everything because doing that makes the better writing. In practicing those advanced techniques, the student will acquire a variety of ways to use them, and that's what we want. It's the variety in ways of using the advanced techniques that allows for the greater creativity, especially in the you know more advanced second, third, fourth year students. So in this case, I would say, let it go. It's a great duel. Okay, another technical question about one of our products, the Phonetic Zoo. We did spend some time in a webinar talking about spelling and the brain and how the Phonetic Zoo is a is a way to teach spelling that uses that auditory approach. Mm -hmm. Here's the question. I'm wondering, in the phonetic zoo, if the test has to be 100% correct one time or two times to move on. The system, as we originally conceived it and have taught it for, well, 20 years now, I think, since the first iteration, is, yes, 100% twice in a row. Now, that seems a little hard-nosed, but what we're looking for is mastery. Very often, a student will get, say, 14 right. You know, they've been at it for, you know, three, five, seven days, whatever. They get 14 right and one wrong. So now they're doubling their effort. Okay, I'm going to get that one. So then the next day, they get the one that was wrong right, but they got a different one wrong because it wasn't solid enough, right? It hadn't become quick and automatic enough, second nature. So now they have to do it again. Okay, now they got 100% right one more time, just to prove that wasn't an accident. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let me interrupt you there. Can that one more time be immediately after they got 100% within that same lesson? I would suggest that it be the next day. The next day. Because what we're looking for, of course, is the principle of spaced repetition. So, yes, yeah, someone could sit there for five hours and just do, you know, lesson one until they get it, lesson two until they get it, lesson three, and cram. Mm -hmm. But we all know from our college years how effective cramming is. 
right? We, we have a shorter retention unless there's reinforcement over time. So the idea of the phonetic zoo is a mastery approach. So yeah, you got 14 right. You still write them all out again, right? And hopefully you get the 15th and okay, so you're still to get it again. Because once you've done that, once you get 100% twice in a row, it moves from, yeah, I kind of know that, to I know I know that. And that's what we want. And it's worth the extra time, it's worth the extra effort to move from, you know, yeah, I kind of know, to I know that I know. That's what we want. So as much as this might frustrate a child who wants to just go fast and get it done, it can be a good character lesson, one of the intangibles that Mrs. Ingham always talks about, which is, what was the Aesop fable? Slow and steady Wins gains the, the spelling competency. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> this listener wants to find an instructor who can teach their child, someone else, because she doesn't feel comfortable or confident to be able to teach her child to write, but she wants to use an IEW method. Where can she find a teacher? Well, we do have, of course, our instructor accreditation program, and we've got, uh, I don't know how many hundreds, but it's got to be up in that uh, higher range now of people who have uh, done the teacher training, sent in all the homework assignments, we checked it over, uh, we said, yes, they understand this, we will give them a certificate, having completed the course, and then list them on our website. So right. what is the link? You, you know the links better than I do. Sure. It's IEW.com slash IC. IC for mm-hmm. Instructor certification. certification. So if you go there, you can, I think, search by geographic area somehow and discover if there is a tutor or teacher or a program or school that has people that we know have at least tried to prove that they understand the program well enough to teach it. Obviously, there are people out there who haven't taken the extra time to do that, and that's okay, but we can't know, so we can't put them on that website. So our website is limited to the people we know. The second option, which of course many, many people have chosen, is the uh, video courses, the student writing intensive, with the Student Intensive Continuation course. And the upside of that is, you know, the video does most of the hard teaching. So the parent or tutor working with the child doesn't have to figure out how to present the ideas. I do that on the video. But you do still have to kind of administer that. Sometimes there's a question of, well, I don't know how to mark the student's paper. I'm not sure if my English is good enough uh, that I could edit their writing well enough that they would learn what they need to learn. Most often I get this from someone, a parent for whom English is their second language, which is perfectly understandable. So in that case, I would say, well, maybe you have a relative or a friend or a teenager, someone else's teenager that does know English grammar pretty well, or maybe, uh, you know, a retired English teacher who goes to church with you, or, you know, look around and see what resources and say, you know, would you be willing to edit my child's papers so that uh, he or she can, uh, you know, copy it over and, and learn by copying the edited portions a little bit more about the mechanics and usage and things. The third option would, of course, be our online classes. Right. We offer them to students who are in fourth grade, at least nine years old, and it's an online format but uh, they use the video, so they watch the video, then they do the assignment, send it to the online teacher, meet regularly, I think once a week usually. Uh, The teacher goes over the homework, teaches some of the fix-it grammar ideas, talks about vocabulary, asks questions, gets the uh, clarity for the students they need to do the next assignment. So it's completely facilitated. And uh, that, of course, you know, because we keep relatively low student-teacher ratio is going to be the more expensive of those options. But I think between the three, we really have something that would work for almost everyone. Right. And if you happen to go to our accreditation page, now speaking, of course, to you listeners, you'll see that there's various levels. There's the registered, there's the certified, there's the accomplished. The registered 
instructor just basically demonstrates that they understand our system. They've done the work themselves. They've done a keyword outline on book lice. They've written a paragraph on elephants, et cetera, et cetera. A certified instructor actually turns in their lesson plans, student samples. We evaluate them and agree and certify them <laughs> that they know how to teach students. And we also ask for letters of recommendations from parents of these of these students who these instructors graded. So clearly a certified level teacher has really done the hard work to demonstrate that they know our stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. The accomplished level, those would just be reserved for a few people who are actually, most of them are working directly for us as authors or somehow do teacher training. Right. But accomplished level is something that's uh, reserved for just a, just a handful of people. So this again is another general question that is happening about this time related to our premium subscription. A lot of people are finding that their premium subscription, which by definition a subscription is something that eventually expires, ours expires after a year, how do they renew and what's the cost of that and what do they get and why should they renew? So just kind of a general question, can you speak to our premium subscription? Yes, well, most people who receive the premium subscription received it as part of the purchase of the uh, complete teaching writing instruction style program. So the fact that it expired a year after they started using it, that would indicate that, yes, it's time to renew. The cost, I believe, is uh, $29 a year. Uh, so it's, I think, you know, pretty reasonable. To be clear, if people have purchased products, like e-products or files or downloads or whatever, those will always be in their account whether or not they renew the premium. So you won't lose access to products that you've purchased. The premium includes access to things that are part of a package that are not individually purchased, and so that access would go away. My, my life dream of having an easy way to create structure and style checklists has finally been fulfilled because um, I wrestled so long. I mean, back in the early days, I was handwriting checklists for each student in each class and photocopying them. And then we had uh, Apple Works, I think, or Claris Works, and then Apple Works, and then Microsoft Word and PageMaker and all the... And, you're trying to use the tabs and the things and remember which keystroke combination will create a little box and get everything lined up perfectly. And then, you know, you go from a three-paragraph composition to a two-paragraph composition, then back to a five-paragraph. And you're put. this is driving me crazy, the number of hours I spent trying to make those checklists look good and be flexible. And I always dreamed if you could just go in and, like, just select what you want. How many paragraphs? Which techniques in each paragraph? You know, just make it a, a menu of what you want, and boom, out pops a perfectly formatted, beautiful checklist. And uh, I have had this idea for so long, and finally we found a programmer who could get this done. Mm -hmm. And so it's our, our IEW checklist generator, trademark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so excited about this that, honestly, I personally would, if I had to, I don't think I have to, but I would <laughs> easily pay $29 a year uh, because I use this checklist generator now for teaching my own students in my own classes. And it just, it's such a handy time saver. And you create one and you can save the template so you can use it again. And I think, what does it take about 90 seconds, maybe <laughs> two minutes yes. to just click the boxes for what you want and boom, you've got a PDF. So I am super excited about this particular product and uh, happy that we can include it with the premium subscription. So, you know, people who have kind of an ongoing need for that, very active teachers, parents, I think they'll see, wow, that's just a tremendous value. And then, of course, I think one of the other benefits is the free webinars. Yes. Right? So every month we do a webinar going through all the nine units, try to 
review and refine things, answer questions, show another source text option, talk about an extension. I think the webinars have been very, very helpful, both for people who are relatively new and want to just get through the units one at a time and not get stuck, you know, way back in unit three in, in, and then it's April. Uh, and also, I've noticed that some of the folks coming to the webinar, I think they've been at every webinar we've ever done, yes. or, or 95% <laughs> of them. So they must be gaining the value out of the reminders and the refinement side. That in itself, I think if you sign up, it's $5. We do nine at least. $45. Yeah, that pays for itself over and again. So I'm sure there's uh, other things. What, what else is included with this 29 a year? Let me just clarify something. It's $29 to renew. To renew, okay. If you were wanting to purchase it for the very first time and you didn't want to buy anything else that goes with it, it's $99 for the first year. And why is that? Well, the first year there's lots of new content that you're getting, including the teaching, writing, structure, and style video streaming. The, the entire course? Yes. Inclu streaming. Yes, inc starting from you introducing how you learned this process, all the way up to the student demonstration classes that you do for the little guys. The whole guys 12 discs. 12 discs. Online, on demand. Streaming. Streaming Yep. for the whole year. For the whole year, yep. Wow. So do that, buy a seminar workbook, and you've got everything you need. Of course, if you buy the seminar workbook with the premium subscription included, you actually save a little money. But that first year, $99.00 unless you got it included in a bundle, and then we automatically send you an invitation to renew. You know how some subscription companies say, yeah, you've been renewed. Whether you like it or not, we don't do that. We We're not going to do that? <laughs> Wouldn't we get more money if we did it that way? <laughs> it, it feels a little underhanded. I agree. <laughs> and I don't like it either. Right. If anyone has any questions, of course, we have the world's absolute best trained, nicest, most helpful sacrificial of their time, always smiling on the phone, customer service team that I could imagine. We we have the AA, yes. A plus team. It is true. So people can give a call, chat, shoot an email, and we will be sure no question is left unanswered. Right. And, and do check the show notes. We do have a lot of links in the show notes that might answer some of your questions before you even have them. But as Andrew said, if you do have any questions, do call us. And I think that wraps up all the questions I have for you today. Well, okay. We'll have to do it again in 10 weeks. In 10 weeks. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>